when I was young, I had to kill a number of people. This time on Unexplained Mysteries. Bizarre beliefs. We'll go inside a real life vampire cult. I use blood to uh, ensure my immortality in this world. With our case studies, we'll show you a world of people with strange and supernatural beliefs. Curses can kill people. Curses can make people sick. Curses can ruin people's finances. Curses can certainly ruin people's love lives. And a famous director caught in a mysterious spell. I think he felt that the picture was cursed and that he was suffering from that curse. It was the mark of the voodoo. We'll take part in the ceremony of an unconventional religion. When the Orisha takes over the body, then the Orisha possesses us. You'll hear from the killer who claims to have the devil at his side. I didn't choose to kill my girlfriend. It was done by the influence of the demon. I believe that Satan wanted her to die. And the expert that disputes it. And that is pure, unadulterated the disturbing accounts of bizarre rituals. I've heard of babies being killed or full-term babies that have been sacrificed. Then I would just be brought into the basement where the table with the child or the animal would be put on to be hurt. We'll expose the secrets of mind-controlling cults. You don't have to argue people into mind control. And witness a shocking service with lethal consequences. The Bible says in the 16th chapter of St. Mark's, in my name, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly things, it shall not hurt them. And the final examination in our Unex Report, right here on Unexplained Mysteries, Bizarre Beliefs. You are about to witness stories of the occult. This is a world that most cannot relate to, a world of secret societies beyond our comprehension. A disturbing world that offends the beliefs of many. We enter this world through cautionary eyes and subjective interpretation. This is a glimpse at the truly unexplainable. Our examination begins with a look at the belief in those who are not living. The undead would be someone who is, is pronounced dead and uh, at certain times the dead corpse reanimates and goes out with a thirst for human blood. Vampires, mythical blood-sucking creatures of the night, the subjects of a countless number of films. These terrifying demons have become a fixture in popular culture around the world. The vampire represents uh, uh, the, the darker side of human instinct. The vampire represents the semi-animal-like quality that is part of our nature, but which in the cultural process of growth and development, we have had to forego. I do ordinary people go see vampires because they identify with a certain uh, collection of characteristics that they don't live out, but which are ignited in what we would call their unconscious. But for some, the fascination goes beyond simple curiosity. Do real life vampires now walk among us? Chicago, Illinois. This man considers himself a vampire. He looks like one, he acts like one, he drinks like one. Most people consider me a vampire because I'm a blood drinker. I use blood to uh, ensure my immortality in this world. Vlad is a very interesting vampire. He's not quite like any other vampire that has ever contacted me or that I've ever studied. Vlad believes that there is a special kind of reaction he gets from the small amounts of blood that he takes. Blood is a, uh, has a lot of powerful symbolism and has uh, since ancient times. It's the life force and any time you consume the life force then you enhance your own vitality. Bram Stoker brought vampires to life with his story of Count Dracula. His character was based on a 15th century warlord known as Vlad the Impaler. Vlad Tepish was not a vampire. He was uh, a real person, a 15th century Wallachian warlord who was a very cruel and despotic man. 
there's only one existing account of him drinking blood, and it was the blood of one of his impaled victims. So this does not make him a vampire. But does this evidence disprove the existence of vampires? I do believe in the possibility of real vampires. I would call a real vampire a non-physical being, perhaps the spirit of a dead or some other kind of being that uh, would attack the living during the day or the evening, almost uh, what we would call a biting poltergeist. Around the, the world, there are many cultures that believe that there are individuals who can fly out at night in some form. There is certainly a possibility that there are many other forms of energy many other forms of power that we just don't understand that may form the basis of the vampire legend and may actually form some kind of power for real vampires. Vlad believes he possesses this power and his fangs and coffin bed are proof of his commitment to this occult lifestyle. What I do and why I've done it is, is my, I don't, I really don't care if any of you believe it or not. That's your problem. Katrina is a believer in the undead. She thinks she is a real-life vampire with a thirst. I'd say the best thing about being a vampire is the taste of the blood and being with someone who trusts you and will let you drink their blood. But is Katrina's lifestyle a danger to herself or to others? If a person wants to dress in black and sleep during the daytime and be awake at night and walk through the graveyards and listen to gothic music, uh, and that person's not hurting anyone, including the fact that that person might want to drink someone's blood and someone is willing to give it to them, I don't see where that's harming anyone. To the outsider, Katrina's habits may seem unusual, but for her, it's completely natural. I would never do anything to a child or to an animal. This is something that I've only done with a consenting adult. You know, they have to be willing to do this, and anyone that I've ever done anything like this with actually has enjoyed it. Calling themselves vampires has added a dimension to their life that must ordinarily be missing. Vampires are sensual creatures, not sexual. It's this sensual nature that drives Katrina's thirst for human blood. Some vampires attempt to take blood here from the carotid artery. Um, however, that's rather clumsy and it's also quite dangerous. So this is not really used as often as using, taking it from the arm. I can use an instrument like this, which is a medical scalpel. It's very sharp. It can be sterilized with alcohol, so there won't be any infection. And it's painless. Blood is an acquired taste. The best place is somewhere on the arms or the hands. And that way they can also see what's going on, which makes it more, probably more comfortable and more fascinating. And I'll just, you know, continue drinking until the wound stops bleeding. Sometimes this leads to a relationship where they say, well, that was kind of interesting. I enjoyed it. Would you like to do it again sometime? To her, Katrina's beliefs are real. She lives her life as a vampire, and she has no intention of changing her habits. My blood drinking is something that I believe I'll do in my life. I have when I was a child, I still do. Vlad and Katrina may not creep into rooms at night to suck their victim's blood, but are there others that will? Do real life vampires actually exist? To dream about vampires, to be attracted to vampires, for the culture to thrill to the idea of vampires is simply nature. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, a Hollywood legend is the victim of a curse. There was no more money to spend on voodoo ceremony. And the witch doctor assured me that this was deeply offensive. Orson had a strong belief in superstition, in witchcraft, in black magic. A look at mystical religious ceremonies. It's as if we were sleeping. We don't recognize what is going on because he takes over our body. The alleged demonic force behind a murder. 
I did not kill my girlfriend. My master Satan did. And the horrific stories of ritual abuse. I remember one time being put on this table that they were using, and they would hurt me with a metal crucifix. We'll examine the power of cults to control people's minds. We're all susceptible to getting recruited into a cult, to being exposed to a mind control program. You'll enter the house of deadly worship. Before I got involved with uh, handling the service, there's no sin that I didn't participate in. And we'll give you the big picture in our Unex report on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, Bizarre Beliefs. Can forces beyond our control dictate the outcome of our lives? For those who believe, curses do have the power to be destructive. Curses are made every day, every moment of every day by people towards other people, and they have effects. Curses can kill people. Curses can make people sick. Curses can ruin people's finances. Curses can certainly ruin people's love lives. Orson Welles, influential director of the film classic Citizen Kane, a larger-than-life character with one of Hollywood's most recognizable voices. But he was also a student of the occult and a believer in the power of the curse. I know that Orson always felt that he had been cursed with the whole Brazil enterprise. Bogdanovich worked with Orson on his autobiography. In the book, Wells discussed his frightening experience in Brazil while attempting to shoot his film, It's All True. Orson had a strong belief in superstition, in witchcraft, in black magic and white magic. And I think he took it quite literally. I think he felt that the picture was cursed and that he was suffering from that curse. I think it pursued him to the end of his days. This is a voodoo witch doctor. I ran into him in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro. We were down there making a documentary film. And so I arranged with a good deal of difficulty to film a voodoo ceremony. But shortly after filming began, production was halted. In Wells's mind, this was the beginning of the end. Everything that Orson Welles did before 1942 worked like a charm. And it was my unhappy lot to have to tell him that the filming was off because I had just received word from Hollywood that the president of the film studio had been removed. It was his downfall. Once he left Hollywood and went to Brazil, there was no more money to spend on voodoo ceremony. And the witch doctor assured me that this was deeply offensive. He never got another job in pictures anywhere remotely like the kind of opportunity he'd had. On my desk, in a script of the film, was a long steel needle. It had been driven entirely through the script. To the needle was attached a length of red wool. This was the mark of the voodoo. For Wells, this was a sign that his film had been touched by some sort of evil. And this would prevent the film from finishing. Brazil has, has a lot of power, spiritual power. A lot of spiritual power. You feel it when you arrive The film was locked in a vault for 40 years. It seemed the curse really was unleashing its power. Producer Bill Crone discovered the film and became determined to complete it. Not wanting to take any chances, Crone contacted spiritual priestess Lena D'Souza to rid the film of its ex. I wanted Lena to remove the curse from the film so that we could go ahead, raise the money, make a deal with Paramount, and get the thing finished. Could one woman free the evil from a film Wells so desperately wanted to complete? 
When I saw Lena for the first time, we sat down and she threw a, a bunch of seashells on the table and looked into them to see what had been done. She said, whoever did this did a good job, but I think we can turn it around. Then when I threw the shells, I read what the shell did, and then I gave him the answer. And the guide says it could be removed. It was not easy to do it, but could be done. Crone released his version of It's All True 11 years later. Over half a century had passed since Wells had gone to Brazil. The film had finally been completed. The curse was put to rest. I don't have any theories about curses. I don't know where they come from, and I don't know where they go. But I think I was involved with one for 11 years, and I'm glad that I went to someone who knew more than I do about curses, because I think if I hadn't, It's All True would never have been finished. Was this Orson Welles film really the object of an unseen spell? He passed away believing that it was. For people like him, the power of the curse is genuine. Certainly, if you believe you're cursed, you're cursed. If you believe you're cursed, um, you've already set yourself up um, to have a bad result. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, Occult Religions. There was a rear end of a dead rat, blood and guts and everything. And if they pick the food and eat it well, the belly gets swelled and they'll die an alleged conjuring of the devil. I started uttering an incantation to loose a few trophic kill. I felt him entering. The mystery behind unnerving rituals. I've heard of babies being killed or full-term babies that have been sacrificed. The poisonous practices of serpent handlers. This year feels 100 times, thousands, hundreds, thousands, thousands of times better than anything that you can even imagine that you've failed. The definitive review in our Onyx Report, all on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, Bizarre Beliefs. There are hundreds of religions all over the world. For most, going to a house of worship and praying is a normal part of life. But some have abandoned common practices and entered into the bazaar. In Brazil, the ancient religion of Candomblé focuses on the land, animal sacrifice, and conjuring higher spirits. These spirits, known as Orishas, rule over their followers and the earth. Respect for the earth is respect for the Orishas. It's an open thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's about nature. It's about nature. One of the fundamental reasons for the existence of Candomblé as a religion is to give people a way of making sense out of their life and to connect to the divine. It is in this passion for nature that Sabrina Glenhill found something to believe in. I became interested in Candomblé because I think I've always been interested in finding a religion that really had something to do with me. Many people are beginning to see ancient religions as something very fresh and new and relevant to them. Speaking in their native tongue, Sabrina received guidance from the High Priestess for her problems. It's been a long time since I've gone to a temple, and I feel that I have left many things undone. I must do them, and I would like you to see what I have to do to please my Orishas. May Lucia is able to speak with the gods of Candomblé to give Sabrina the answers she's looking for. Open the roads. Ocean, as you should know, is the mother Orisha. Mother already says it all. Mother is a word that needs no definition, but mother is the one that punishes children, that gives children discipline. Mother is the one who says how we should live. If not, we wouldn't all have a mother to guide us. But in Condomblé, communication through a high priestess is not enough. Sabrina must speak to a spirit directly. 
This will take place at a ceremony where she will conjure her Orisha. The ultimate expression of divinity in man's connection to the divine is in spirit possession, where in a ceremony, in a ritual, a divine being, a god, a saint, an ancestor, literally comes and possesses the body of the worshiper. It's an experience like levitation. Understand, when the Orisha takes over the body, then the Orisha possesses us. It's as if we were sleeping. We don't recognize what is going on because he takes over our body. Sabrina attends the ritual, seeking a meaning to the damaging issues in her life. I already had a feeling sort of a premonition that my Orisha would manifest itself. And I know very well that if my Orisha were to appear, it would be asked very nicely to go away. As the ceremony begins, Condomblé priestesses seem to be taken over by something not of this world. They become possessed. It's not long before Sabrina becomes part of the ritual her body appears to be consumed by her Orisha. In this state, she searches for solutions. After this exhausting experience, Sabrina claims she sees more clearly. The spirit possession has given her life a new direction. Someone told me that I had to take care of my mother, meaning my Orisha. And I realized that that was a message, perhaps that I had gone there to receive, that I had been neglecting my Odisha and that I needed to start taking care of her again. The occult practice of spirit possession is an essential part of Candomblé. Could this mysterious ritual actually be guiding followers to a better life? For believers like Sabrina, it does just that. Island, the Bahamas. Here, there is a set of beliefs that rule over the islands. It's a religion known as Obeya, and it's based on witch-like magic and curses. Francis Armbrister has lived here for 20 years, and during that time, her house has caught fire twice. Locals refuse to enter her store, convinced that an Obeya curse has been placed. They were standing in front of the store and the air was just thick. I knew something was wrong. And I said, what's the matter with you people? And finally Agnes spoke, piped up and said, somebody put an obia in your store. I went in the store and I looked in the drawer and there was a Bahamian bill and a US bill, dollar bill, and at the rear end of a dead rat, the blood and guts and everything. Searching for an answer, Francis turned to Mildred, an employee of hers and a follower of Obeya. And I went to Mildred, and Mildred was my cook, and supposedly one of the biggest witches in, on the island, but she never would admit it. And she said, you take, it, you take this object out of the drawer, and you make a cross all the way across the drawer with a thick layer of salt, and then pour kerosene or gasoline over it, and then take it down to the beach, put it in the water, and set it on fire. And, and, and if it floats away and the smoke goes out to sea, you're safe. If it comes back onto the bay, you're in trouble. Mildred passed away shortly after this incident, but it was in death that her Obeya powers seemed to be revealed. As Mildred died on this night, we was in the kitchen cooking, I and my daughter, bed, sitting side by side. There was a pot on the stove and it had a Big, she had a big heavy lid on it, and that all of a sudden it came, it lifted itself off the stove and came flying across the room straight at her head. And my daughter only had to dodge her head and mark the sign of the cross in her face and the platter fall on the ground in her feet. Now I and her get scared and we run out of the kitchen because we know then it was Mildred. The practice of Obeya was brought over from Africa and spread across the Caribbean. Wherever they came, they brought their own religious ideas, like the old African religion or voodoo. And they also found different circumstances, and so they adapted their African religious ideas to those different circumstances. Believers in Obeya make unusual concoctions. 
One of them involves putting everything from dirt to urine in a bottle and hanging it from a tree. This is said to protect residents' property from thieves. They see a bottle in the tree, they know you have something in that bottle. And if they pick the food and eat it while that bottle there, the belly gets swell and they'll die. The Obeya religion seems to have an ominous power over its followers. And those who are loyal believe this power can protect them. African religions don't worship the dark forces, but they do know that the dark forces exist, and they recognize that there are people within the religious culture that know how to use these dark forces. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, we'll enter the underworld and examine the belief in the devil. I believe that Satan wanted her to die. It's not the fault of Satan, it's the fault of the human heart. You'll hear first-hand accounts from people exposed to ritual abuse. Patients are talking about murder, or they're talking about the sacrifice or their own rapes. I had to kill a number of people when I was young. And find out how members of this church receive strength from a higher power. In my mind, they shall take up surface, and if they drink any deadly things, it shall not hurt them. And we'll go back around the world of bizarre beliefs in our Onyx Report on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, Bizarre Beliefs. Satanic worship, ritual abuse, and mind-controlling cults, the epitome of evil. Those who have experienced this evil have terrifying stories to tell. Jim Jones, David Koresh, Marshall Applewhite, charismatic leaders who convinced hundreds of people to believe in their ideals. They took over these people's minds and controlled their every action. We're all susceptible to getting recruited into a cult, to being exposed to a mind control program. You don't have to argue people into mind control. Quite the opposite, you sweet talk them and you deceptively sweet talk them in to coming along with you to join your group. Once a part of these cults, members take part in terrible deeds, sometimes ending in death. I testified in one trial where a cult leader had carried out her orders at, quote, making the child submit making the child surrender, and they had beaten the child for two and a half hours, and the child died. And the parents who did it were, when I interviewed them, remorseful and knew that for all time, they had to live with that. That they had so trusted this woman, and so believed she was a direct pipeline to God, that they had killed their own child. More people are coming forward with horrific tales of ritual abuse. They speak of being surrounded by cloaked figures and being forced to participate in unimaginable acts. Is it real or simply imagination? When we're talking about issues of ritual abuse, where patients are talking about murder or they're talking about a sacrifice or their own rapes and things of this sort, uh, it really takes its toll because of the sense of the unbelievability of how they survived it. I've heard of babies being killed, people delivering babies um, prematurely, or um, full-term babies that have been sacrificed. Again, no one wants to hear that. It's, it's too horrific for the population. Barbara Jackson is a survivor of ritual abuse. She did not recall memories of her torture until later in life. People would start arriving, and they would have robes. And I would just be brought into the basement, and the basement is divided into two halves. One half is open. That's often where the table that the child or the animal would be put on to be hurt. I remember one time being put on this table that they were using, and they would hurt me with a metal crucifix. Connie Valentine claims ritual abuse pushed her into a personal hell. Yes, I had to kill a number of people when I was young. I had to put knives in their stomach. 
many times they would put their hand around my hand and they would put the knife in and let me know that this was my fault. But is it possible to have false memories? Could survivors be creating these stories in their minds? To have recovered repressed memories, to have flashbacks to events that they never knew about before and had no memories of before, that I say yes, indubitably is a false memory and that those events never occurred. But for those who believe they've experienced ritual abuse, the memories are vivid and painful. For these people, treatment is the only answer. I think we're training more and more therapists to know how to treat these people. And I think more and more people really are willing to take that challenge to go back in time and feel the pain. I did not kill my girlfriend. My master Satan did. David Damian Trevillo says he worships the devil. His beliefs led him to a jail cell. I didn't choose to kill my girlfriend. It was done by the influence of the demon. I believe that Satan wanted her to die. One day, while Trevillo's girlfriend, Angela, was out, he was at home channeling his so-called master, Satan. I started uttering an incantation to Lucifuge Rofakel. I felt him enter me. I went into the spirit world and brought it back out with me. I started speaking in tongues I didn't understand. When my girlfriend came back, she got cold chills as soon as she walked in the door. David claims that Satan took over his body. Then, listening to his master, he stabbed Angela 39 times. Trevillo blames the devil for this heinous crime. I would never deny that Satan exists. What I would deny most vehemently is that he has any power whatsoever to control or to direct or to possess human beings. Don't blame me. The devil made me do it. And that is pure, plain, unadulterated Satanic worship and the belief in the devil are very real. The experts don't believe Trevillo's story. For them, there's a much simpler answer. It's not the fault of illness. It's not the fault of Satan. It's the fault of the human heart. We have to, as a society, remain aware that the cult phenomenon is still with us and is ever present and is a danger always. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, Bizarre Beliefs, the poisonous ceremony at a Georgia church. Lord, I said, Lord, don't let nobody get snake bit hurt. Don't let nobody get snake bit and die. We got some strict down here. One go of it, two. And the loyal followers who claim to have gotten closer to God. Hey, I found happiness, love, peace. This was a high that you said, Lord, uh, this, this could describe it. And we'll travel through the world of bizarre beliefs one last time in our Unex report coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, Bizarre Beliefs. For most people, church is a place of peace and comfort. Worship is conducted through prayer and faith is proven through beliefs. But at a small chapel in Kingston, Georgia, religious ideals are put to a test. Here, commitment to a higher power comes at a dangerous price. All during the week, I pray. When I pray, I ask the Lord, I say, Lord, don't let nobody get snake bit and hurt. Don't let nobody get snake bit and die. The Bible says in the 16th chapter of St. Mark's, in my name they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. For members of this bizarre congregation, handling venomous snakes and drinking strychnine is the ultimate sign of dedication. 
We got some strychnine here and one guff of it to kill you. All you had to do is take one swallow, is all you'd have to take. Preparation for the sermon involves choosing servants, not passages from the Bible. We've got about uh, four copperheads here in this uh, aquarium here. And there's uh, two copperheads and a rattlesnake there. And down here we've got a, this is a cottonmouth, I call it a cottonmouth water mice. This is what I transfer them to in the church, the church and these wooden crates. I'm not no supernatural person, but I'm serving a supernatural God. I'm as afraid of snakes as anybody else. Over the years, there have been 75 deaths in snake handling churches. The possibility of death, however, can't keep believers away. Hey, I find happiness in this, love, peace. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. I don't care if you've been high on marijuana, I don't care if you've been drunk on alcohol. This year feels 100 times, thousand, hundred thousand, thousands of times better than anything that you can even imagine that you felt. While holding the snakes in their hands, the handlers go through a process they call anointing. They go to another place and receive powers no human could possess. For these people, it's a life-altering event. My life before I got involved with uh, handling the surface, there's no sin that I didn't participate in. The very first time when I handled a serpent, I just walked up on the podium and took one of the rattlesnakes out of one of the brother's hands. And as I picked that snake up, this was a high that you could not, this just you couldn't describe it. I still have that high. While experiencing the high, Junior McCormick is bitten by a copperhead. His hand swells from the venom, but his spirit is not broken. He won't accept any medicine and will not have a doctor look at it. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's not long before Junior rejoins the ritual. The poison doesn't appear to hurt him. In his mind, the Lord has put him to the test, and he's passed. It thawed a little bit, but I'm not sick. I'm ready to go home, drive home, and they won't hurt me. I'm gonna be all right. <laughs> Next on Unexplained Mysteries, the Unex Report. What leads a person to an occult lifestyle? Where does ordinary stop and the bizarre begin? Can unseen forces affect our lives and push us to the edge of death? And how do people let others take control of their minds and command them into the unspeakable? Get the definitive answers in our Unex Report next on Unexplained Mysteries. And now for the Unex Report. The belief in the occult is widespread. All over the world, there are those who choose to live their lives against what is considered normal. I use blood to uh, ensure my immortality in this world. My blood drinking is something that I believe I'll do in my life. I have when I was a child, I still do. And as far as I know, I always will. And throughout the world, there are believers of invisible forces that affect our future. Curses can kill people. Curses can make people sick. Curses can ruin people's finances. On my desk, in a script of the film, is a long steel needle. This was the mark of the voodoo. I don't have any theories about curses, but I think I was involved with one for 11 years. There was a pot on the stove, and it lifted itself off the stove and came flying across the room 
straight in their head. And then there are those who let their beliefs take over. I didn't choose to kill my girlfriend. It was done by the influence of the demon. I believe that Satan wanted her to die. We got some straight nine here and one gulf of it for kids. All you have to do is take one swallow. all you have to take. But there are many who dismiss these unnatural beliefs. They've chosen reality over the occult. To have recovered repressed memories, to have flashbacks to events that they never knew about before and had no memories of before, that, I say, yes, is a false memory and that those events never occurred. It's not the fault of illness, it's not the fault of Satan, it's the fault of the human heart. Occult lifestyles and practices exist. While the reasons for their existence are still unclear, the search for answers continues. So for now, these bizarre beliefs remain an unexplained mystery. We have to, as a society, remain aware that the cult phenomenon is still with us and is ever present and is a danger always. We're looking at worldwide destruction in the next 36 hours. Holy. Welcome to Earth. Independence Day, tonight at 8 on Bio.